Hi Facebook family. Uh, again, this is uh, our YouTube family. Both, I guess. My whole two subscribers out there. Yeah. Anyway, it's not about numbers. It's about reaching people and sharing the gospel. And the good news is Jesus Christ uh, gave his life so that all mankind could be redeemed. And as he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he was talking to the Jewish people when he said that. Because God blinded the eyes of the Jewish people. So I got, was getting a little irritated. keep hearing Christians, well-meaning Christians. I mean, pray for our enemies. Pray for those that are in sin. Because sin is sin. It all equals death, sickness, and then death. So um, pray for all our people in sin and all the Christian brothers uh, and sisters who claim Christ that are still living out of the marriage covenant and things like that. But um, I hear well-meaning Christians say, Oh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they're talking about the, the people who are depicting Christ crucified and they're mocking Jesus. They know, the homosexuals know what they do. They know they're blaspheming. A lot of them know the scriptures, so uh, Father, Father, help them, help them not to sin because they know what they do. But anyway, I was getting off on a rabbit trail. My name is Tony Fargo. I was raised in a family of five children. We were not raised in a Christian home. Uh, we were raised uh, anything but a Christian home uh, without going into a lot of detail. There was sexual, physical, and mental abuse. And uh, I wanted to speak on the power of the spoken word. God spoke the world into existence, so therefore uh, the spoken word is very powerful. That God says, it's in his Bible, that the words we speak, we speak life or death, so speak life, you know, and that our tongue is a double-edged sword, so whatever we say, you know, that rubber, I'm glue, whatever you say, uh, bounces off of me, sticks back to you, that little nursery rhyme, there's truth in that. Anyway, my mom spoke um, mental illness into my brother. He's fine now, but he still uh, believes that our parents somehow have control over him or have access to him that can hurt him. And then he still questions my being connected to them that I would somehow, I don't know. I, I just don't, uh, I pray for his 100% recovery. He is out of the Napa State Hospital and, uh, and I just wanted to show you, this is his wife that he met there. This is not myself. And uh, I used to visit John every year. And uh, let's see another picture. Oh, here we go. He, um, that's John and myself there. Every year I would take pictures at the Napa State Hospital with... Um, you know, uh, John and uh, and his wife. and But anyway, my mom used to call, pretend to call the funny farm and the police. And uh, then one time she actually did call the police and say John was a runaway. And uh, so the police came. And I remember before the police came, John said, you know, I didn't run away. I'm right here. She goes, that's okay. When the police get here, I'll tell you. I'll tell them that, you know, you came back. So no fault of my brother's own, besides being unwanted by my parents. He spent a life growing up in juvenile homes, youth authorities, and things like that. And then he spent 20 years at the Napa State Hospital. Because in another video that I did... Um, just talk briefly about starvation. I was a victim of starvation. Food was a big form of punishment in our family. And my brother was much more severe with him. He would be locked in the garage for up to three days. And my mom would wonder how he survived. And he had eaten some dog food. That John had made a small tear in the bottom of the bag of the dog food. 
And so he confided in me and told me that he ate the dog food and he got water from the laundry faucet in the garage. So um, anyway, I tattled on him and he was beaten for eating. But my mother was very twisted and sick. And uh, even though we, we had a rough upbringing, um, for most of my life I've always had a very positive and bright light coming out of me and I worked in the dental office for 30 some odd years and sometimes I would call a patient from the waiting room back and before we even get in the chair I'd have people refuse to let me work on them and nothing was said other than hi how are you come on back and a lot of times you have to be like a uh, junior psychologist to to see their mood most people are afraid going to the dentist but I was able to make people comfortable with, you know, laughter and humor, but uh, could never understand why some people, without me offending them in any way, just just and barely any words spoken, why they refused to have me around them. And now I understand it was the light of Christ that I invited Christ in my life at a very early age. Um, you know, my other thing I talked about, here's my brother John, um, the night that we rode in the station wagon uh, with my mom's ex-boyfriend's dead body. Uh, sounds weird, but John had a brace on his leg here from his leg being slammed in the car door. But anyway, um, at a very young age, Christ stepped in to be my Heavenly Father. And I denounced my biological father. And I knew at that time those were my, not my words, but God's word, let me know that he wouldn't leave me orphaned. So um, I just want to be a testimony here to tell you that uh, God will never leave us orphan. He'll step in. And um, I wanted to read to you over here about taking, oh, excuse me, that was surely loud, uh, about taming the tongue. Okay, um, James 3.9 uh, to 3.11, taming the tongue with it, the tongue, of course, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. So um, just a, another side turn. All men are called Adams, and... Uh, we are all made from God particles. We're all part of God. So the Bible tells us we're to pray for our enemies and bless those that curse us. I mean, I want to wish anyone to go to hell, so please pray for our enemies. Pray for those Palestinian children and Muslim children that are raised in hellish conditions and, and taught to be murderers with a Mickey Mouse character. Sorry, I keep going on long rabbit tangent trails. But anyway, taming the tongue, James says, With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter waters? No. Anyway, God bless y'all. I love you. And after having cancer and rebuking all the doctor's diagnosis, Jesus healed me from stage 4 cancer, lung, lip, nose, my entire body, colon, uterus. Rebuking people's curses and, and death and hatred. Even the lady at the when I went into the car, she said, oh, you have wet hair, you're going to catch a cold. I said, no, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. That was easy after cancer. Rebuke those things and rebuke the curses from our forefathers and all the stuff from before. Ask God to render your heart. Repent. Fast. Pray for Israel. Pray for the Jewish people. Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. I, sorry, I, um, I'm tired. I stayed up all night and uh, pray fast, love, love each other. Let's not fight over doctrine. I've done that too much myself. God bless y'all in Jesus' holy, holy name. Love you. Bye.